Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a recent study out of the Buck Institute in California has made a direct correlation between senescent or zombie cells, M1 macrophages, CD38, senolytics, and also our dwindling NAD levels and a way of keeping our NAD levels at a youthful level. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentation and let's find out what the study concluded. Firstly, many thanks to Tao Plakrapong for sending me a link to this article. And this is a review of an article called Another Win for Senolytics, Fighting Aging at the Cellular Level Just Got Easier. And that's by Shelley Fan, PhD, and there's some other interesting information on senolytic trials. There are links in the description below to the article and other links I used to make this presentation. So in the article, Shelley references the parable of the blind men and the elephant and likens it to longevity. For those who are unfamiliar with the parable, in essence, blind men who don't know what an elephant is are asked to touch different body parts and then conceptualize what the animal is like. Because of their limited experience and specific area of touch, each man has a vastly different conclusion, but they all believe that their description is correct. She says that aging, thanks to its complexity, is the biomedical equivalent of the elephant. In that, researchers have focused on either one or another hallmark of aging, with some success, but not a number together. For example, past research has shown that energy production in our cells can become erratic and non-functional as we age. Cells programmed for apoptosis don't die, but instead become senescent cells. These are also known as zombie cells. A senescent cell is a cell in our body whose telomeres have reached their hayflick limit, i.e. its telomeres have become so short that the cell cannot divide anymore. It is not a healthy cell anymore, it's not exactly dead, but it is programmed for death. This cell death is called apoptosis, it's the Greek for self-eating. If it doesn't die, it starts to produce chemicals that increase inflammation and damage our DNA. The key is to find out what other hallmarks of aging, such as lower NAD, inflammation and shortening telomeres, how they interact with zombie cells so we can see the whole picture. Right, let's take a look at the latest study. A new study published in Nature Metabolism has started to connect the dots. A study in mice linked up three promising anti-aging pathways. The first one is attacking senescent cells. The second one addresses inflammation and the third one addresses tackling unreliable energy production in our cells. All three elements point to one key factor that drives aging. Let's take a look at each of these in turn. In her article, Shelley likens individual cells to small cities, each with their own power plants, and their superstar molecular worker is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. As we know, NAD is a molecule that's critical for helping our mitochondria produce energy. As we age, our cells start losing NAD, and with this reduction, our mitochondria become less able to produce the energy we need, which in turn flips normal cellular function into dysfunction. At present, this hypothesis has only been proven in mice. One dysfunctional element is that cells programmed to die through apoptosis don't die. They're not consumed by the body as extra fuel, but instead hang around as senescent or zombie cells. These zombie cells then turn to the dark side and start to leak an inflammatory cesspool of molecules called SASP that spread harm and injury to adjacent healthy living cells. Let's now take a look at senolytics. Senolytics are a group of compounds that destroy these zombie cells. A study in old mice, the equivalent of a 90-year-old human, found that wiping out these zombie cells with two simple compounds increased their lifespan by nearly 40%. Others, using a genetic kill switch in mice, found that destroying just half of their zombie cells helped the mice live 20% longer and also allowed them to have healthier kidneys, stronger hearts, more luscious fur and a higher than normal energy level. 
In the same way that some companies now sell NAD boosters like NMN and NR, pharmaceutical companies are investigating over a dozen potential senolytics, and this is in a race to bring at least one of them to the market. But is two better than one? Could NAD boosters and senolytics be combined? So this new study led by Dr. Judith Campisi and Dr. Eric Verdin at the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in California asked if the lines between lower NAD and zombie cells could be connected. And the question they asked was, could the connection be CD38? If you watch my video on raising NAD and lowering CD38, you will know that CD38 wrecks havoc by boosting inflammation and destroying our beloved NAD. Using tissue from mice and humans, the team traced CD38 to a type of immune cell. These cells, called M1 macrophages, which literally means big eaters, are known to increase inflammation in our body and cause DNA damage as we age. When comparing fat tissue, Isolated from young and old mice, the team realized that M1 macrophages relentlessly pump out CD38 as our cells age, which in turn breaks down our much needed NAD. Dr. Eric Verdun used the analogy of a sink and a water source and said, do NAD levels drop because of a faucet problem, i.e. our ability to make NAD, or is it a leaky sink where aging breaks down the NAD too fast? Our data suggests that in some cases, the issue stems from a leaky sink, which to me means that we can make NAD OK, but it runs out of a leaky sink before we can use it. So this is what we know so far. Aging triggers immune cells that pump out CD38, a chemical that destroys our NAD. But how can we stop CD38? In an unexpected twist of events, the connection actually seems to be the zombie cells. Now remember, zombie cells leave a chemical evidence trace called SASP. They also change their molecular structure, so it is possible to separate them from healthy cells. In the fatty tissue gathered from aged mice, the team identified zombie cells and found that their toxic waste vastly increased the amount of CD38. So it is the SASP that direct immune cells to make more CD38. So if zombie cells are the directors, then getting rid of them should reduce CD38 and in turn preserve our NAD. Well, that's the theory. To test it, the team used genetically engineered mice. This allowed the scientists to identify the zombie cells and then selectively kill them. The team injected mice with a drug that damaged their DNA. This mimicked aging in the sense that zombie cells were increased and also CD38. The result, killing the zombie cells lowered CD38, which in turn did preserve the mice's NAD. In a statement, Dr. Verdin said, we are very excited to link two phenomena which have been separately associated with aging and age-related disease. For now, zombie cells seem to be the master level culprit that drives inflammation, decreases NAD levels and breaks the cell's energy production. This suggests that senolytics, which selectively kill off zombie cells, could, as a secondary effect, also increase NAD, something we didn't know previously. So on the subject of supplementation, Dr. Eric Verdun said, ultimately, I think supplementation will be part of the equation, but filling the sink without dealing with the leak will be insufficient to address this problem. In other words, for NAD supplementation to work efficiently, we may need to use senolytic drugs to decrease zombie cells and CD38 levels. In essence, plug in the leak in the sink before we turn the NAD tap on. So where can we get senolytics from? In an article posted in the US National Library of Medicine, it states that senolytics are a class of drug that selectively clear senescent cells. The first senolytic drugs are dacetinib, which is approved in the USA and in the European Union as a leukemia treatment. Quercetin, 
which is a plant flavanol available in supplement form. Navita Colax, which is an experimental anti-cancer drug and Fisetin, a dietary flavonoid, which again is available in supplement form. Early pilot trials of senolytics suggest they decrease senescent cells, reduce inflammation and alleviate frailty in humans. Clinical trials for diabetes, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, Alzheimer's, COVID-19, osteoporosis, eye disease and bone marrow transplants are either underway or are just beginning. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, I particularly like the analogy of the sink with the tap and the plug or the stopper and the way that when we're young and the, the tap is new and the stopper or the, the plug is new, the sink is always full of um, NAD for our body to come along with a big jug and scoop up as much NAD as is needed. And then as our body ages and the um, zombie cells eat away at the plug and allow NAD to fall out and our production of NAD, i.e. what comes in from the tap, is also reduced, the next time our body comes along to scoop up a big jug full of NAD, there's probably only half a jug. And as we get older and older, the more that the jug is put in, it has to scrape the bottom of the sink and you're ended up with less than half, quarter, one eighth of a jug. When before, when we were young, we were getting a full jug every time we visited the sink. So by getting rid of the zombie cells, we're destroying the plug and allowing our energy to fall out. And by repairing the tap, taking it back to its efficient early days, then hopefully with our NAD boosters, we will have uh, a full sink of NAD that we can call on at any time. Well, that's it for today. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care. Bye for now.